Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome to a very late Blood Splattered vlog where I'm going to talk about The Dead Don't Die, the latest film by Jim Jarmusch. And for those of you who don't know, Jim Jarmusch is one of those filmmakers who was an indie darling in the 90s and got really popular as a result of that, making very quirky, very strange films that cater to a very niche audience. We're talking films like Dead Man, Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai, and Only Lovers Left Alive. Films which, if you're a fan of like me, you're very aware are very slow, very strange, have a very interesting sense of humor, and are not mainstream in the slightest. So naturally, when I saw he had a trailer for a new movie coming out that was a zombie comedy of all things, I had to fucking see it. I love Jim Jarmusch and his weird quirky movies, so I just had to see what he was going to do with the zombie genre. And when the movie finally came out, I didn't get a chance to see it because I was so fucking busy, so I started reading what other people were saying, and, uh, naturally, it being a Jim Jarmusch movie, it was very polarizing, in particular among horror fans, and for reasons I completely understand. Because having finally seen the movie months later, I can say pretty definitively that The Dead Don't Die is a harsh critique of the zombie genre. And that right away is going to rub horror fans the wrong way, and it's completely understandable that it does, because horror is a genre that gets shit on unfairly all the fucking time. So if you're a fan of it, you're spending 90% of your time, when you're not watching it, defending it. You're defending it against your family, you're defending it against critics and film snobs, and you're defending it against the general public who thinks you're a psychopath and a murderer. So believe me when I say right off the bat that I completely understand why some people were offended at this movie. But with that being said, don't tell anyone, but I actually agree with the criticisms that Jim Jarmusch put forward in this movie. Because basically what I took from this film, the criticism that I saw in the film, is that Jim is essentially saying that zombie movies, which are built on this foundation of anti-consumerism, you can see this in Dawn of the Dead, for example... They themselves have now become such a formulaic product, they themselves are now the thing that the zombie masses are consuming. Which, you gotta admit, dude's got a point. Now that being said, even though I like this movie, and I like what he was saying, and I thought it was a really good point, I still like my formulaic zombie movie, and I'm gonna continue to enjoy it for the rest of my goddamn life. Anyway, I feel like I just pulled the cart before the horse and put my entire thesis of the movie up on Front Street, so I should probably talk about other aspects of the movie now. Because even if you disagree with Jim, or you don't give a shit what he's trying to say, it's still a very entertaining and very funny zombie comedy movie. If a bit slow, but that's true of all of his movies, so you should just know that going in. But yeah, this is a movie with a kick-ass ensemble cast. You have Bill Murray, you have Adam Driver, you have Steve Buscemi, Danny Glover. God damn, it's even got Larry Fessenden. And it's filled with a lot of classic Bill Murray dry humor all throughout. And not just from Bill Murray, from everyone. So while it's not as good or as fast-paced as Shaun of the Dead or Zombieland, I still enjoyed the fuck out of myself. It's a movie that got me to simultaneously laugh my ass off while also thinking critically about horror movies, which is what I normally love to do. Just in general? Hmm? I don't know what to tell you. So yeah, if you're a Jim Jarmusch fan, this movie is a must-see. But if you're not a Jim Jarmusch fan, if you're just a horror movie fan, then you should go in cautiously. Because his movies are an acquired taste, and if you don't have that taste, it's going to make you throw up. Not literally, I meant metaphorically. This is not a vomit gore film, for the record. God damn, now I'm talking about vomit gore films. I should probably move on to the spoilers soon. Anyway, as per usual, I'll include some sort of Amazon affiliate link in the description below. And if you click that link and buy or rent or pre-order the movie with that link, then I will get a kickback from it. And there is no on-screen animal death in this movie. There is off-screen via news reports, so uh, be warned going in. And with that said, let us move on to the spoilers. Anyway, the basic premise of The Dead Don't Die is you have this small town, and we're following this small town sheriff and his partner as they go around town trying to deal with a zombie apocalypse that's upon the town. But the plot in this instance isn't what's important in the movie, because the plot is intentionally pointless. 
Like there are whole characters we're introduced to, like the kids that are watching from inside the correctional facility who we never actually see what happens to them in the end because it's emphasizing that pointlessness. We don't get to see because what the fuck is the point? What happens to everyone else in this movie? Duh. And throughout the movie, there's a lot of meta references to the fact that we're in a movie. And I'm not talking like Scream, where they talk about other movies within the movie. I'm talking about legit scenes in which Bill Murray and Adam Driver criticize the script of the movie they're in. And this is kind of genius because it makes every flaw in the movie part of the point. And I know that for some people, that's going to feel like a cop-out. But for me, that was just fucking hilarious. But again, your mileage may vary with that. But perhaps my favorite meta joke in the entire movie is that every time the song, The Dead Don't Die, which is the theme song to the movie, comes onto the radio, they call attention to the fact that it's the theme song, and the movie will briefly turn into an ad for the song. And I love this, because it's kind of like a criticism of things like The Walking Dead, where you'll have characters come across things that are only there because someone paid for it to be there and is trying to sell it to you, even though it's a zombie apocalypse scenario, so there shouldn't be new products for you to see. So yeah, I feel like I got a lot of what this movie was trying to say. There's probably elements of it that I didn't get, and I look forward to reading uh, interviews with Jarmusch so I can get all of his thoughts on the movie. And I also look forward to there being a commentary eventually so that I can get more in-depth thoughts of what the movie's supposed to be about. But I feel like I have a basic idea of what's going on in this movie, and I, um, I don't know, I just enjoyed figuring out this movie. It's not always the case. Sometimes I get annoyed by an overly artsy movie that's being overly artsy for the sake of it. But I felt like this movie actually had a point, even though that point is also a point about pointlessness. Once again, eh, what can I say? I loved it. Anyway, I'm not going to rattle on too much more about this movie because I feel like I've kind of said everything I want to say about it. But there is one thing I want to highlight, and that's my favorite scene in the entire goddamn movie. Because you see, there's a character in this movie that intentionally does not fit with the rest of the cast, and that's Tilda Swinton's character, which is this Irish morgue attendant who's also a samurai and worships the Buddha. There's like a mixing and matching of cultures in her, and it's very weird and very strange. And then all is explained by the end of the movie in a scene in which she meets them in the graveyard because she says early on, meet me in the graveyard. So Bill Murray and Adam Driver go to meet her in the graveyard. And then they have an argument over this scene that's happening currently, not being in the script and going, what the fuck is happening? And that's when an alien spaceship comes down. And it turns out Tilda Swinton was an alien who was observing humanity in its final days. Which is why she was such a mixing and matching of cultures and acted so weird. <laughs> and this scene, I kind of like wondered early on if there was something off about her, if she wasn't quite human. But I did not predict that a fucking spaceship was going to come down and take her off into space. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... I love the fuck out of this movie. It's not for everyone. But if Tilda Swinton, being a weird Irish samurai alien from outer space, does not sell you on the movie... Excuse me, my I'm starting to lose my voice because I just recorded two vlogs in a row. If that does not sell you on the movie, then you are not going to like this movie. And if you can't take a little bit of criticism at horror, then you should definitely avoid it. Um, I, I understand. I fucking hate funny games because the point of funny games is if you like funny games, then you're a bad person because you're the reason why society is fucked because you like horror movies and fuck funny games. I hate funny games for that reason. But this movie and its criticism, I felt like it was very apt. It's applying the same type of social criticism that zombie movies do onto the zombie movie genre itself. And I felt like that was appropriate. And, uh, I thought it was also insightful. Maybe I would have been more upset at it if uh, the movie itself wasn't as entertaining as it was. And for some people, it won't be. Because like I said, it's slow as fuck. And it's got a very dry sense of humor. And it's, it's filled with quirky characters. But um, it all clicked for me. So, huh. so if you don't like it, that's good on you. If you disagree with the criticism, that's good on you too. And if for whatever reason... 
this movie just pissed you the fuck off, I get it. But if you were at all on the fence with this movie, and you weren't sure if you wanted to see it, hopefully this vlog, and everything I've detailed therein, will help you decide whether or not you want to see it. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And be sure to check out my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description below. And if you decide to go the Patreon route, know that even a dollar a month can go a long way. And with all that said, I'm going to go rest my fucking voice because, Jesus, it's starting to die on me. And I need it for voiceovers. I need it for voiceovers. <laughs> But sex. <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fucking close this vlog because now I'm just fucking around. Peace out, my fellow gorehounds, and I'll catch y'all later. Pull up